Hello everyone, my name is Preston McMillan and I'd like to talk to you about my experience taking the operational color vision test and the color vision medical flight test uh, administered by the FAA. Now, all pilots, usually at some point or another, are going to require uh, the issuance of a medical certificate and you have to go to a special doctor called an aeromedical examiner, commonly abbreviated AME, and uh, they'll check your height, weight, blood pressure, and all sorts of other stuff and obviously eyesight is very important being a pilot so they're going to check your um, your chart where you have the letters and kind of a pyramid shape they're going to check your depth perception but they're also going to check your color vision they do this by a uh, certain test called the Ichihara color test and it's these circles with lots of tiny little dots in there and mostly it's going to be they're checking for red and green color blindness and to some people it can be kind of difficult i particularly found this difficult and um, when i took my test it was very very early in the morning and it was also uh, just kind of difficult i hadn't seen them in several years and uh, i just tripped up and failed uh two of them so my original score was four out of six and they are a medical examiner hit me with a limitation on my medical certificate that said not valid for night flying or by color signal control. Now this presented quite a problem because not really anybody's going to hire you as far as your your airlines, Delta, American, United, whoever, because you have this restriction. You basically have to be able to fly whenever they tell you to and that's that. So I have this uh, or excuse me, I had this restriction on my medical certificate. So now I'd like to share with you how I got it removed and the process that it took. So the aeromedical examiner originally gave me some forms before I left the doctor's office and he said, take these to an ophthalmologist and have them do some color tests on you and fill out this form in its entirety, stick it in this prepaid envelope and send it off to uh, Oklahoma City and they'll be able to take care of it for you and remove the restriction. So I took it almost immediately uh, within the next week I had an appointment at an ophthalmologist office and was able to uh, have the test. I They took me through a more expansive test than they did at the aeromedical examiner uh, examination that I had. And what they did was they tested my left eye, my right eye, and both eyes together, uh, more colors beyond red, green, and uh, it just, the doctor noted no color vision deficiency in the forms that the aeromedical examiner asked me to fill out. So two months had gone by, and I'm thinking, okay, I haven't heard anything back, and um, I graduate from college in a couple months, so let me call the, the FAA and see what the status is. So I called them and they told me that they would not accept those results because it was not an aeromedical examiner or uh, they neither listed the type of test that I had, the score that I made, whether it was 15 out of 15, 100%, whatever. Uh, so they did not accept those results. Uh, what I had to do in order to have this restriction removed from my medical certificate was uh, tell the FAA that I would like to take the operational color vision test and color vision medical flight test. Now the flight test is only required for the first class medical certificate which is the highest class that the FAA issues. This is if you wanted to be the captain of an airliner, and most first officers on an airliner also have this as well, but if particularly if you want to be a captain, you have to keep that first class medical current and up to date. So uh, here's what I did, and the FAA takes quite a while to process this paperwork. Uh, I didn't have my student pilot certificate at the time. I still don't have that, but I'll be filling that out very soon when I start flight school here in a couple days and it's, it gave me a lot of time to review some helpful information that I also think would be helpful for you as well. So the first thing that I would recommend taking a look at or Googling is, um, it's called the Flight Standards Information Management System, I believe is what it's called, FSIMS, F 
S-I-M-S uh, dot F-A-A dot gov and I'll include a link in the description to where you could find this specific uh, regulations regarding the color vision test uh, that I'm about to tell you but I was able to print this out and highlight and share a couple things um, and what you have to do for um, the first part of the test and they broke it into two different parts and I understand why now because they don't want you to go out and rent an airplane if you fail the first part of the test and what you have to do is um, and I went through I would recommend going through and reading about this understanding what the test consists of before you walk in there and you're not going to be stuck with a surprise so the first part of the test is to read and interpret an aeronautical chart uh, based on its colors. So these are what the VFR sectional charts look like and they have all sorts of colors on the inside different types of air spaces. You don't have to know what it means when you walk in there for your test. In my situation I did not. Um, but it just looks like this. It has all sorts of colors. You have yellow for cities, you have magenta rings, you have blue rings around VOR points. Um, you have all sorts of different colors. Uh, green is the main color here. We're looking at the coast of uh, South Carolina. And particularly, it's just to make sure that you can uh, see the information uh, displayed on the charts and interpret them correctly in a very short amount of time to where it's not you're not having to guess what color it is because bl the blues, the magentas, the elevations, they all mean different things. So. I would recommend spending the $10 to get an aeronautical chart. The quality of the charts is going to be very high and you're also going to be able to take a look at uh, something and identify all sorts of colors. You can also look at the chart legend and see all of the different symbols, the different colors, and it's all right there in front of you. I would highly, highly recommend that. It's a very good use of your $10 considering that this test and this is this goes for both the operational color vision test that I'm talking about now, and also the uh, operate color vision medical flight test. You only get one shot. If you miss one of um, the colors or one of the light signals, one of the colors uh, on the plane, and if it's an obvious miss, then they basically fail you, and you won't be able to ever have this restriction removed from your medical certificate and your dreams of becoming a pilot or at least a commercial pilot are basically shot. So that's the first part, reading and interpreting an aeronautical chart, the colors, and not necessarily the meaning, but just the colors on the aeronautical chart. Um, the second part of the operational color vision test is called a signal light test. Now this was intimidating and I, this was the part that I was very concerned about as far as my test. I wasn't concerned about the flight test. I wasn't concerned about the aeronautical chart reading, but I was concerned about this signal light test. Now, what it does, or the process for this is, you are going to go about a thousand feet away from a control tower and they're going to shoot six light signals at you. You're either going to be red, green, or white. So, uh, these light signals are used for if you use if you lose radio communications when you're flying your airplane, you'll be able to change your transponder code and let the tower know you've lost radio contact and then they will be able to issue the, you these light signals and give you your clearance to land, your, um, they'll either tell you to go away or you have permission to land based on these light signals, so it's very important. Now these light signals are very, very bright um, and Essentially, my experience, the, the white light was almost blindingly bright uh, from 1,000 feet and 1,500 feet, which is where the next six signals will come from. And it's a random order. And same thing, if you miss one, you're basically done. That's, that's about it for your experience. And you, they'll just kind of continue through the test, and then they'll tell you you missed one, and they'll send you home. Uh, luckily for me, I didn't miss any. And... Uh, it's a random order, like I said, and when you go through, uh, they'll do six in random order. I don't know whether they have to do two red, two green, or two white. Um, it could be 
uh, anything, chances are what they will do is they will have at least one red, one green, and one white from each distance. Beyond that, they may do um, different variations of red, green, and white, um, but they will do at least one of each from 1,500 feet, which is the furthest distance, and also 1,000 feet, which is the closer distance. You'll start at the 1,000 and work your way to the 1,500 feet. So, uh, what I would recommend doing, and depending on your access to a smaller general aviation airport, uh, I called the airport that's not far from my house, where I'm also um, going to be starting my flight school here next week, and I asked them if it would be possible to conduct a signal light test from 1,000 feet and 1,500 feet on the ramp. Now, to make sure that you can just tell them that we don't have to be in an airplane flying just on the ramp from 1,500 feet and also 1,000 feet in order to kind of get a sense of what it's like. It is worth the practice and just calling and maybe if one airport doesn't let you, then um, maybe call another airport that's smaller, but usually your towered airports are gonna be the ones that have this, what's called a signal light gun, and they'll be able to, to give you kind of a mock test. Now, if you pass it and you get all 12 correct, you're not gonna be able to record that as your thing. It actually has to be done, administered by the FAA Flight Standards District Office, and they're the ones who are in charge of running this test. So, Beyond that, um, the time doing this test was well worth it. Now, don't call up uh, a large airport like Atlanta or Orlando or uh, Newark. Don't don't call those airports. They're simply not going to have time to do that test. They're way, way too busy uh, to conduct those kinds of tests. Call your smallest of general aviation airports that have a tower. Uh, and chances are, if they're nice and they have time to work you in, they'll be able to administer a type of test like that. Luckily, I was able to speak with the, the manager of the airport that I took mine at, and she said, come on down, and we'll be able to have to conduct this test for you and give you a kind of an experience of what it was like. It was very easy. It was very uh, clear whether it was red, green, or white, and... Uh, I have all confidences that your test, whether it's conducted at an airport or at the Flight Sanders District Office, will be very clearly defined whether it's red, green, or white. And that's good news for you as a pilot. Uh, I was very concerned that when I was conducting my test that it wasn't going to be, going to be clear enough and well defined. So uh, that was a relief for me. So. The next part of the test, uh, and it took about two weeks at this point to conduct the test and get word back from Oklahoma City that I was permitted to take the color vision medical flight test. Now, this test was very simple, very straightforward. The examiners just asked me, uh, if we see a color and we point at it and ask you what color it is, then you tell us and we'll record your response. So. Uh, what I would recommend doing is taking a look at chapter 2 of the Aeronautical Information Manual. And I just happen to have a book of the Aeronautical Information Manual. It also contains the regulations in it as well. But I would go through and I'd study this information and it's going to talk about approach lighting systems and it's going to talk about uh, what color are the runway lights, what color are the taxi lights. Um, what color are the taxiway center line lights? Um, it's going to talk about all sorts of different colors used in aviation, uh, whether it's on the airplane, whether it's on uh, an approach landing system or the runway itself, the taxiway, um, the lights on the airplanes. So I would highly recommend studying this because it's going to be able to tell you uh, what colors things are going to be and the bottom line, the reason I studied it was because I didn't want to be hit with a curveball 
and see something that I've never seen before. One example is uh, it's called a tricolor visual uh, approach slope indicator system, and uh, it uses the color amber, uh, green, and red in order to tell you whether you're too high, too low, or on glide slope. Now, luckily, there's maybe only two of these systems in use in the United States. They're extremely rare. I couldn't even find a good example online when I was studying for this in order to find out what it looked like. Most of the approach slope systems are going to use a combination of red or white depending on the system that they use. And uh, luckily the test was pretty straightforward. We hopped in an airplane, uh, we flew around, they asked me what color um, some water towers were. And an example, when you see the checkered pattern and it's red and red and white, checkered that's about what it is the actual color is called aviation orange but you know they're not going to expect you to know that and it's close enough it's red and white and that's what uh, they're expecting you to answer now another note as far as the color vision medical flight test is con concerned uh, they the examiner specifically mentioned that they would want me to rent an airplane with a G1000 uh, all glass cockpit in it. And the reason for that is it displays a ton of colors and uh, this can be anything from weather information, traffic information, uh, the attitude indicator and all sorts of different colors are used uh, in this all glass cockpit between your uh, primary flight display and your MFD. I forget exactly what that's called, I'm sure. Um, it means something flight display um, but bottom line they said if you if you're not able to rent an airplane with a G1000 navigation unit inside it we're gonna have to spend some time in the simulator in order to determine whether you're not colorblind and see additional screens so one of the things that I did I said well let's go ahead and rent the airplane with the G1000 and it's usually nicer airplanes uh, it's more expensive to rent, but bottom line, you can go ahead and get the test over with sooner rather than later. So, um, I think that's really about it as far as my experience with the Color Vision Medical Flight Test. And one of the things that I would recommend doing is um, just stay calm, cool, and collective, and you know, review these materials that I've talked about, and you'll be able to pass this test with confidence walking into it. And another thing that I would say is just if you don't know what they're referring to exactly, ask for clarification. It is much better in these circumstances to receive this clarification and answer correctly than answer and give an incorrect answer and your chances of becoming a commercial pilot are uh, out the window. So. One of the things that I would say as a final thought, this whole process for me, I started it on July 3rd and I received word from the FAA that I was approved and uh, had a revised medical certificate issued. It was December 10th, so it took half of an entire year. So it took a long, long time to do it. Two months for them to return the original paperwork from the ophthalmologist office, which didn't even really matter in anyways. Um, I wish I would have known that or the original AME that I went to would have told me that. Um, but, you know, people miss things sometimes. Um, and then another two months in order to get the tests scheduled at the Flight Standards District office. And the FAA refers to these as FSDOs, F-S-D-O, just in case um, you were wondering uh, what the abbreviation for that was. So that's kind of my experience. And the month that it took for them to start the test, um, two weeks in order to do the flight test, and then two final weeks for me to hear back from the FAA and receive my letter of, um, they will issue you what's called a letter of evidence. And essentially it says that you have to carry this with you at all times when exercising the privileges of your pilot's license or your medical certificate. And you also have to take it to each subsequent uh, doctor's office visit when you go see an aeromedical examiner for a flight physical and keep your uh, flight medicals up to date. So I put that in a letter protector 
and I also have my uh, medical certificate first class with no limitations on the back of it. Um, so the good thing about this is I have this letter of evidence now, and since I've passed these tests with the FAA in person, I'm now exempt for life on this color testing, so the next time I go to the doctor's office, whenever that is, and have my flight physical taken care of, then they're just going to say, oh, okay, all right, you've got this letter of evidence here in your hand, so we don't need to t do this color testing. You are uh, essentially golden as far as it's concerned with the color testing on the FAA and your flight physical. So that's really about the only positive that came out of this whole situation, and I'm just really glad that it's over with, I was able to pass and get it taken care of where I can go to flight school and I can pursue my dream of becoming a commercial airline pilot. But it's a very stressful situation and I wish you the best if you are in this situation and you have this uh, limitation placed on your medical certificate. So if you want to, please men mention anything in the comments that you want to. Let's make this a learning experience for everyone for everyone to be able to collaborate and learn and we're not trying to cheat on this test because uh, obviously the colors are very important in the aviation world but it is worth it to be well prepared and walk into the test ready to pass and be able to continue on your dreams to become a commercial airline pilot so I thank you for your time and I hope this video was a little bit helpful um, maybe not um, as concise as I wanted it to be, but at least you have all the information and you hear a little bit about my experiences as going through this operational color vision test and the color vision medical flight test. So thanks for watching and we'll, hopefully I'll put out some more videos soon, depends on what my schedule looks like, but this is probably the most important one that I want to put out there and share with everyone. So. Thanks for watching and uh, see you in the skies.